Hey, this is Chris from 3D6 Charge, and today I'm gonna tell you how I paint pox walkers quick and easy. So for paints, we're just gonna need a bunch of washes. We're gonna need Nolan Oil, Agrax Earthshade, Seraphim Sepia, and Truki Violet. If you wanna use Army Painter equivalents or any other equivalents, that's fine too. Uh, just use, you know, black, brown, a sepia tone, and a violet tone. The other colors I listed as optional because while I do use them in this video, you can really use whatever you want. And that's kind of the fun of box blockers. You've got a bunch of them. Uh, you can do whatever you want. They're great for experimenting on because, you know, again, you've got you're going to paint like 20 of them. So you know, have at it. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first, mount your mini on something that you can hold. Holding a mini by the base is a nightmare. So, you know, I like to grab a piece of wood, put some blue tack on it and just stick the guy right on there. So you can see before we even started this, we primed him Corax white. So let's start off with a coat of known oil. And I like to thin this down about uh, one part oil to one part water. I'm using medium to thin mine down because I paid eight bucks for a pot of it and I'm, I really wanna get my money's worth, but you can realistically use water and it'll be fine. Now, the reason why we want to thin this down is so that uh, we, we really want to just shade the shadows. We don't want to like make the whole thing black and gray. So that's why we thin it down so that it, it's a lot more transparent on the flat surfaces and it just pools into the recesses. We're going to give the entire model a coat of known oil, but make sure you go back before it dries and wick away some of the excess. You know, you, we want shading, not just, you know, heavy, heavy blobs of known oil. We're doing a few coats of washes before we even get the color, so you don't want to overdo it at this point. Now, this is a really good idea to do these in batches, doing them like three, four, five at a time, because while you're waiting for one model to dry, you can start another one instead of literally waiting for paint to dry. The next coat is Agrax Earthshade or a brown tone, again, mixed 50-50 with water or medium. Um, we're doing the same exact thing as we did with the last step. We want to just wash the model all over and making sure that it's not pooling too much in the recesses and that we're getting a kind of a dingy cast to the entire model. Now, the main reason why we're doing this is because we're kind of trying to get away with doing a poor man's zenithal highlighting here, where we're trying to exaggerate the shadows and highlights uh, without actually having to paint them on. If you like a kind of grittier look to your models, you may want to do this uh, before you put on any contrast paints, because one of the problems with contrast paints is that they can tend to kind of look a little cartoony. Um, but by adding on these two layers of washes before adding on the contrast paint, uh, you can take away a bit of that cartoonish look and ironically give them more contrast. And this is how it looks after the coat of Agrax or shade has dried. Our next coat is Seraphim Sepia. Again, thin down about 50% with water or medium, whatever you've got. Um, and this time we're trying to concentrate on just the fleshy bits, the skin bits. Um, now you don't gotta be pixel perfect with this. So if you happen to like splash it onto the edge of his pants or you know the stock of his rifle, it's not the end of the world. If you really care, you can try to wick it up with your brush before it dries or wet your brush and just wipe it away. So as it turns out, recording things and trying to paint at the same time is hard. So I ended up uh, accidentally painting his entire gun here with Seraphim Sepia, which as you'll see later, has some interesting results. It didn't really come out in a way that I liked, but again, uh, with pox walkers being what they are, um, it's great for experimentation. So now in the future, I, if I wanna get that particular effect, uh, I know what to do to get it. So silver lining. And with the sepia dry, this is what our plaguey boy looks like. Complete with dumb sepia toned rifle. For our next step, we're gonna do a coat of Drinky Violet. Um, for this particular one, I thinned it down 50-50. Uh, you can just do it straight out of the pot if you want to. It'll just give a more intense uh, violet color. But what this will do is give the flesh just a kind of Kind of repugnant, uh, bloated look to it. For painting Poxwalker skin, I, I find it's a tone that I really like and it stands out a lot against the otherwise pretty drab colors of your Death Guard. Again, we're just looking to put this all over the fleshy bits uh, so that, you know, again, we'll give that flesh an all over bruised look to it. Here he is after the coat of Drukey Violet, and I gotta say, he's really starting to come together. His skin is looking very pallid and disgusting, just the way we like it. 
Now, if you want to, you can totally stop here with the skin, or if you want to try to take this to the next level, uh, let's add in some Carabird Crimson to the mix. Now, you want to apply this pretty sparingly, kind of just focus it around the uh, boils here. You really want to just add it to wherever you think that the skin would look inflamed, and it's going to pull around and give that nice inflamed look to all of his, you know, pock marks and boils and bruises. Okay, now let's see if we can salvage that rifle without having to rebase coat the entire thing. Um, again, we accidentally covered it in Seraphim Sepia, so I'm gonna try to hit it with some Griff Charger Gray right now, just straight out of the pot and uh, see what comes out of it. And it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good at all. Maybe if I put more on, it'll look, nope, nope, still looks bad. Okay. Let's try Basilicanum Gray. Let's see if that can make something out of the rest of this rifle. So we're just gonna slap it right onto the, uh, like, I guess this is the receiver here. And it looks okay, I guess. It just looks uh, a lot warmer gray than I was expecting. For something like this, where it is a lot of warm tones already, um, I would kind of want like a cold gray to stand out apart from the rest of the model. While I've got the gray, I'm just gonna hit his knee pads with a bit of the Basilicanum gray um, and any other parts that are going to be gray as well. Again, you don't really need to be the neatest painter in the world. Your pox walkers will survive and it's not gonna be the end of the world if they're not painted entirely within the lines. Likewise, we're gonna bust out the snake bite leather contrast paint and hit anything that is going to be leather like his boots or the pouches on his belt and the belt itself. We're also gonna hit the uh, wrappings on his rifle here, which is like the one place on his rifle where the sepia tone actually helps. And let's hit the canteen real quick with some Militarum Green. Now for his pants, I'll be honest, I started uh, running out of colors that I wanted to use. Um, I don't own that many contrast paints and frankly, I they didn't want to do any traditional painting on these pox walkers, so I grabbed uh, one of the last colors I had left, which was Plague Bearer Flush, and just started slapping it uh, all over his pants here. And just about as I'm finishing up his pants and I'm expecting my handwork, I knock over my pot of contrast paints, which is every miniature painter's worst nightmare, because this stuff is super expensive per milliliter. Thankfully, I just happened to have some uh, pipettes laying around because I was mixing up some uh, other inks earlier. And I like to think that I got up uh, maybe half of what I spilled, which, while not great, it's better than having lost everything. So moral of the story, go on Amazon, grab some uh, pipettes. They're very handy for mixing up washes and also picking up the paint that you spilled because you're an idiot. Anyway, his pants are dry now. The sky's the limit with these guys, and you can either keep it right here and finish off the base for an easy, quick tabletop standard, or you can go crazy with highlights and picking out the boils and bony protrusions. Before I finish up with this guy, I'm just gonna hit some spots real quick with some Nasdrag yellow, uh, just to bring a little bit of an orangey color to some spots of his flesh. Um, you don't have to do this, of course, but I think it just adds a nice little something to it for very little effort. Here's a couple of other pox walkers that I did using uh, similar methods, you know, maybe not 100%, maybe I, you know, didn't thin down a particular wash or, you know, I use a slightly different color. Um, experiment with it, have fun with it, you know, you're going to paint like dozens of these dudes, so have at it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you want to catch us live, we do a podcast, info's in the description below. Thanks for watching.